The next risk here, there's a franchise agreement with many cumbersome restrictions. If they don't comply with that agreement, penalties, no longer being able to operate as a franchise, which could affect their ability to continue. So I'm going to say there's a risk that non-compliance with the franchise agreement with many cumbersome restrictions could result in penalties slash no longer being a franchise affecting the entity's ability to continue as a growing concern. Can cross that off. And now I've got some risks at the assertion level. So, assertion level for inventory valuation because EcoF is the only supplier, so if the products are overpriced, the inventory will be overvalued. So I'm going to say there's a risk with regards to inventory valuation. As EcoEarth is the only supplier, So if stock is overpriced or inferior quality, it will be overvalued. I've now got a risk at the assertion level and at the assertion level you respond with your audit plan. Because they said do not give detailed audit procedures and we have already adjusted the audit plan when we looked at the risks at the financial statement level, we have incorporated a response to that risk, more substantive procedures, testing at year end or as close to year end as possible and increasing our sample sizes. Can cross that off. I've got a risk at the financial statement level going concern because if EcoEarth sets the selling price too high that they can't sell the goods, then they won't be able to continue. Also, if EcoEarth sets the selling price too low, when the cost exceeds the selling price, there's no profit, you won't be able to continue. Okay, so either way. If the selling price is not fair, it's too high or too low, it can affect Go Green's ability to continue. So I've got a risk that the entity is not able to continue as a going concern if the selling price determined by Eco Earth is not fair and make the points too high to sell or too low to make a profit. So I've explained that they won't be able to continue if they don't have a fair price. And I've then got an assertion level risk with regards to the occurrence of revenue because EcoEarth sets the sales targets. If those targets are really high and they're unable to achieve them, they may fictitiously record revenue to show they're meeting those targets when in fact they are not. Go Green is not. So I'm going to say there's a risk that revenue is overstated in order to meet 
the targets set by Eco Earth. And I can cross that off. And now we come to all these group risks. So as soon as there's a group, there's those five risks because of a group. And then there's the related party risks. And in addition to this, there's the risk because the subsidiary is foreign. So the risk for the translation into the consolidated financials is big. So let's go now and put a subheading for the group to put down all the group risks. So guys, all I want to do here is leave some space so that I can keep adding company risks and then create a space where I can start to now add any group risks. So I'm going to leave two pages and then I'm going to put down here the heading for the group and address risks that are specific to the consolidation now. So I'm going to say there is a risk that the consolidated financial statements are materially misdated because I'm going to now sub-point it. Consolidation is complex. Because intercompany transactions are not eliminated because the accounting policies of the companies in the group are not consistent. And then, guys, applicable to both the company and the consolidated financial statements, you can discuss related parties, but you won't get marks for doing it for both. Okay, so choose where you're going to do it. But remember, related party transactions are not all intercompany, okay, because there could be related party transactions with specific manage, uh, management level and not necessarily between a company. So it does need to be considered at consolidated financial statement level, and it's not the same as intercompany transactions not eliminated. So I'll just add here related party transactions not at arm's length, and that related party transactions. and related parties themselves are not disclosed. And then guys, with regards to the group, there is a risk for the company, and that's that if risk three is not applied appropriately, because it's complex, so there could be misstatements in the company's financial statements. So risk that if risk 3 is not applied correctly because it is complex. Goodwill requires assumptions and estimates in determining the correct value. And then I forgot for the group the additional complexity because the subsidiary is a foreign subsidiary. So they Consolidated financial statements could be misstated if the subsidiary is not translated or the subsidiary's financial statements at the correct exchange rate because it is a foreign subsidiary. 
So I come back, I've done all my group risks, I've done my related party risks, I've done the foreign subsidiary risk. Then, they do transact with the foreign subsidiary. So in the company, there's the risk that there's non-compliance with foreign regulations, being the Zimbabwean regulations, which could mean that they're no longer allowed to purchase from Go Green Menu, and then also the assertion level with regards to those purchases from Go Green Menu, if they are not translated at the correct exchange rate, and also the risk over transactions around year end being recorded in the incorrect period. Okay, so back to the company now. So there's a risk of non-compliance with foreign regulations. for the importing of products could result in penalties no longer being able to import and thereby affecting the going concern. Because it's an additional regulation. And then there's the risk that imported goods are not translated at the correct exchange rate. Affecting the accuracy of the purchase. and ultimately the valuation of any inventory on hand at year end, and recorded in the incorrect period, for purchases over year end. Affecting the cutoff of your purchases. And completeness or existence or rights of the assets at year end. And I can cross all of those off. It's owner managed because the owner and the financial director are related. So there's a risk of material misstatement. as Go Green is owner managed and I'll explain Mia and Don are married therefore there's opportunity to misstate for their purpose And now I've got a concern that maybe management integrity could be lacking because of this opportunity. This can affect my responses. So here's now where I want to go and update a response to say, potentially place less reliance on management representation letters. and more reliance on third party confirmations. Cross that off. I've got a risk here because they've got a computer information system that is not integrated. There's some manual journal entries that need to be placed. So there's risks for misstatements. So the computer information system is basic and not integrated. Therefore, there's possible misstatements
in the manual journal entries. Pass. And I cross that off and then I've got assertion level risk and financial statement level risk because all non-current assets and non-current liabilities are not recorded in this computer information system. A journal is passed for them. So I can go and discuss those specific balances, but because there's lots of them, I'll put it at a financial statement level. So there's a risk that non-current assets and non-current liabilities are not valued correctly as a result of manual valuation. Cross it off and then it brings into question the financial director's knowledge because he doesn't even know how to value them he waits for the auditors to give him the value. So there's a risk that the financial statements are materially misstated as a result of the financial director lacking IFRS knowledge as he waits for the auditors value to adjust the non-current assets and liabilities. And I can cross that off Okay, and then I've got the tight deadline, how it affects both the financial statements as well as the auditors. And this question was the impact on the planning, so I can actually address both the financial statement risk as well as the detection risk for the auditors because of the tight deadline. And this again is under both the company and the group, but you won't get the mark twice, so you can put it wherever you choose. There's a risk that management has insufficient time to account for subsequent events or review the financial statements for errors due to the tight deadline. And then under our response, because this is going to affect the auditors, I can say there's a tight deadline. I need to consider additional staff to assist. Otherwise, there's too big a detection risk for us. And I can address those two. And lastly, we've got relying on the component auditors. So once again, that is the auditor's risk. Uh, alternatively, you can put it into the financials and say that there's a risk that the consolidated financials could be misstated. It's a component auditors. Don't pick up misstatements in this component, which are then consolidated. So under the group, I'll just say there's a risk that misstatements in the components are not identified by the component auditors. resulting in misstatements 
in the consolidated. And in response to the auditors, what could we do? We've got to do sufficient pre-engagement checks on the competence of the component auditors. Okay, there's more, way more than 23 marks here. So let's move on to three. 